All right, Kurt, here we go. I'm nervous. <laughs> there you go, Kurt. <laughs> All right, everyone. Welcome once again to the Manufacturing E-Commerce Success Series. I'm your co-host, Damon Postalka. Man, do we have a show for you today. A special guest. Man. Kurt and I are just, just can't even hardly speak this morning. You can tell from that the, the pause at the beginning. We don't know what's going on here. We forgot where we we're at and everything. We've only done this like three times now, I think. But, Kurt, take it away. So happy Dude. to see everyone. Drop the comments. Sorry. I <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm like just total starstruck right now. Sorry. Yeah. I'm going to get my composure together. Ready? All right, here we go. Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome to this amazing, incredible show. We're at the end of January already. Can you Can't believe, believe it? it? Wow. Damon, look at this lineup we've had. Like we're, we're, we were just talking baseball. Look at this lineup. We had Kerry Smith, uh, CEO, founder of Big Ass Fans. We have Scotty O, the editor in chief of Inc. Magazine. We have our, 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 our soul sister, Allison DeFord, last week and today. Yeah. Are, are you guys sitting down? Are you sitting down for this? A ready here, Amy, I'm going to do it. I'm just ripping off the Band-Aid, right? Amy Blaschka. How'd I do? Did I do all right? That's Amy it. Blaschka That's is with us today. Amy, happy Friday. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. And thank you for that like lead up. I'm feeling a little pressure to kind of perform now, but excited like, to be here. This is like, I am so... Oh, my Amy, so I, I have to admit, I ha, you know we're gonna it's social media, so it's not it's not stalking if you follow people on social media, right? It's just fans, we're followers. I've been following Amy for years on Twitter, believe it or not. So I took a little hiatus on LinkedIn for a few years, and I'm just kind of hanging out on Twitter. Amy in this wonderful office that she's in used to do all these videos, like she would, right? Amy, you <laughs> right? She would do all these videos, and I'm like, man, she is just so cool. She is so inspiring, so captivating. She is a Forbes contributor. She is a ghostwriter. Yes, this is a real thing, according to Amy. You are a content machine. So, Amy, let's just dig into things. Man, we just have so much to cover today. I'm going to stop chatting. Share a little bit your background. Like, hi, I know UC San Diego. When you're off at college, did you realize you're going to be such a content creating machine? Share a little bit about how'd you get this journey started? Uh, no, I, I I don't think anyone thinks that. Um, but you know, when I when I went to school, um, I, I graduated with a film and media mm -hmm. uh, degree, um, thinking I would be a filmmaker. You know, I, I the idea of working with a group of people collaboratively to tell a story and bring something mm -hmm. to life that that's really meaningful to me that idea of taking something just an idea and like seeing it blossom and, and, and come to fruition so it seemed like a natural fit and i consider myself a creative person so um you know but shockingly after i graduated i could not find a job as a filmmaker much to my parents chagrin so you know, <laughs> like oh okay uh what else so um i did what i'm like okay well what is a uh, creative adjacent like what is you know what could i be doing so, you know whatever mm -hmm. And um, I landed a job in a very tiny little kind of marketing firm. And I say tiny, I mean, the, there were like two co-founders, two women and like me, you know? Yes. So um, the beauty of that is that when there are not a lot of people, you do a lot of things, right? So I had exposure to, you know, I was doing marketing, I was doing advertising. They had me writing stuff because my minor had been communications and I've always loved to write. And in fact, in school, um, I was going back and forth, vacillating between do I, you know, my demo writing is the degree or, you know, should I do the film? And I went back and forth. And I even had in a creative writing class I had, I had a professor pull me aside after class and say, Amy, I really think you should consider changing your major. And I was like, no, no, no whatever, whatever. She she knew better than I did at the time. But anyway, I, I worked in, uh, in, in that small firm down in San Diego. And then I moved up back to the Bay Area where I had grown up and where I live today. And I uh, worked in advertising in a big firm called Young and Rubicam. Um, and it was like, oh, this is really cool. I love that. And um, and worked around different things, just all sort of in that same arena. Um, and then I went and worked at YNR's sister company called um, Landor Associates, which was a branding firm. And this is like forever ago, right? I'm no spring chicken. So I'm like, branding, what is that? You know? And I'm like, oh, I, this is something I can get behind because it was really about every touch point, right? Visual, verbal, how you present yourself to the world. And when I say you, I'm talking specifically, I was working with um, companies, 
and with brands, right? So it would be, you know, products and different things. The, the concept is still the same. It's the way that you present yourself, the way you're positioned, the way you are trying to attract your ideal customer. You know, what do they think about you? And you have a chance to shape that through a visual means and through a verbal means. So I loved that. Um, and I did that and also at another firm similar and then I um, had our first daughter. We have two. And, you know, before I was traveling all over the country, um, these are the days like, you know, pre 9-11, right? So I, like you could yeah. I, like would drive to SFO, take a day trip to Minneapolis, <laughs> meet with the client, yep. on that 3.30 flight to get back to SFO to get, and yep. that was like a date. It was crazy. Um, but I knew I couldn't do that after we had kids. So I had our oldest daughter and I was like, okay, you know, what am I going to do? I'm on maternal leave. I decided not to come back. Nobody believed that I would like be a stay at home mom, which I did. I did for a while. And then both my daughter and I needed to talk to people our own age. We decided, okay, it's time for mama to find something. And um, because it was a mom, I was like, okay, I know I can't do the travel schedule. Is there something close? And you know what? It's been forever since I've interviewed. So my best friend's husband was the chairman of a board of this thing called a, a, convention and visitors bureau which i'm like tourism travel what is that okay well you know he goes oh amy he's like the ceo just left and he was like oh and it was kind of under bad circumstances but you know you should interview for this and i was thinking all right i've never done it but i'll just put myself out there i'll just see i'll get my I'll just i'm thinking nothing will come of this other than some experience and whatever well i ended up getting the job offered to me and i took a leap of faith and went you know what i can do this and one of the reasons why and people go well that's completely different the, the common thread that strings it all together was this power of storytelling, right? And it wasn't, you know, I wasn't selling beer or a theme park. It was a destination, right? Same principles of branding. It's, it's you know, destination branding. It's, it's right. doing that. And again, working with the team. So I was the CEO, building this team, building it up, doing all these things. And so it appealed in that way. But I did that for about a decade. And I say I stayed in that industry forever because it was really, it's hospitality. It's about service. It's the good mm -hmm. people, right? And that was very appealing to me. But the longer I worked there, the farther I got from sort of what I call creative Amy, because, you know, great, I could put together a budget, I could secure funding, I could do this, we could do whatever. I was great at it. And I was dying inside because there was no creative aspect to it. And I say creative meaning like actually like me writing something out or creating something. So um, I left there. I consulted for a while. It was very low hanging fruit to be able to do this. But I was like, what am I going to do? And there got to a point where I'm like, yeah, I can't keep doing this anymore. And at the urging of a good friend who's a writer, he's like, Amy, you're a writer. You need to write. And I think it just, that turning point was me just accepting and actually calling myself, like, I have no problem doing that today, but I'm like, I am a writer and actually saying it out loud and believing it and yeah. then just doing it. <laughs> so, you know, that, that was a, it was a long nonlinear career journey, but I will tell you like most things, all of that sort of experience informed who I am today, how I view the world, how I move through the world and what I write about. So um, I, I said it's, it, none of it was wasted. It was all good and it made me who I am today. Man, wow, yeah. okay, this, so good. All right, so start out, you know, out of college, you know, took a little, you know, uh, little, little career turn, you know, you this professor says, uh, you know, maybe you should take a little change of pace here and that the writing thing might not work out for you so well. Love to see that professor today, right? No, yeah. she actually, she was the one who said you should do it. Oh, should do it. My bad. No, but, but I tell you, I had um, my AP English teacher in high school laughed at me. I, I wrote something. It was a creative assignment. And he read it out loud to the class and laughed at me. And now I was mortified. So I was I was like, I will. So I was like, I'm not a writer. So you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 suck. So stop doing that. <laughs> So, and, and Amy, when you did the, when you were doing branding, I know like you, you've worked with like major companies, major fortune 500 yeah. companies, like you yeah. said, flying all over the country. I think I saw Clorox and some other big brands that you worked with in the past. Uh, sounds like the nonprofit was a perfect fit for a young mom, you know, building out your career and kind of juggling those uh, different roles, what have you. So let's talk about 2011. Okay, so 2011, when you leave this CEO, and again, like as CEO, like you could probably, you know, if you, you know, your board loves you, you love your board, you know, you love your, your, the, your pat, you, you know, you didn't have a passion that was what was missing. Talk about what was that leap of faith? You know, what did that feel like jumping into entrepreneurship when you, you know, big corporate, uh, nonprofit? What did that feel like kind of going over the ledge on entrepreneurship? 
Um, well, it was scary, right? Yeah. Um, it, it, but it was one of these things, like you look at it one of two ways. It's, it's frightening, but it's also exciting. And mm -hmm. what I learned about me um, is that I really value my freedom and autonomy. So if I'm, if, you know, if I'm going to make it, it's up to me. And that's, you know, I, when I figured out that actually I could deliver on that promise to myself, it was hugely empowering. Right. So, um, whether I was still consulting and doing the tourism things, but then when I, you know, finally kind of switched over to a strategic writing practice, that was like, Hey, you know what? I mean, so much of, you know, what we do, we wait for someone else to give us permission, yeah. you know? And we don't need to, you just, it, you just do it, start doing it. And, and, you know, you don't have to wait, whatever it is, just start doing yeah. it, you know, because stop talking about it. You know, when something happens, it, it, present tense, you are a writer or you are an accountant or whatever you want to be, you right. are just do it. And, right. and I think that there's so much fear around that that prevents us from really going after what we want. We blame it on external forces, right? Yeah. Oh, well, it's, it's a pandemic or my boss talks or, you know, whatever, but it's always internal, right? It's always yes. your own limiting beliefs that it comes down to, or somebody else's like that horrible English teacher I had that had that circling in my brain thinking, yeah. you know, believing that was truth. And it's like, yeah. it's not, you make your own truth, you know, you yeah. go out there and do your thing. And the awesome thing is like your business, you label it now as a, so you are a SaaS company, if I'm not mistaken, right? Stories as a service, <laughs> you know, a little, yeah. little spin yeah. on SaaS, right? So uh, I absolutely love that. So stories as a service and delivering powerful stories as a service. And I know you're huge, uh, guys, as a matter of fact, you have to go to Amy's website. We're going to, we have all sorts of cover today. You yeah. Have to to Amy's website, please connect with her here on LinkedIn, of course. But Amy, you talk about your why. Right, right on. You you have an awesome bio on your website. As a matter of fact, Amy, she has like two different ones. She's like, hey, if you want my casual kind of my my just Amy one, and then if you want my, my more serious one, you click here, you get her serious one. But you talk about your why, Amy. Talk about your why and why inspiration is so important to you when delivering this passion. So my why, um, a la Simon Sinek, right? Like what is kind of grounds me mm -hmm. and what I keep coming back to is inspiring yeah. transformation. Nice. So I get so much satisfaction out of being an active participant in any sort of transformation. Now, I mean, this can be literally like I'm a big like home improvement person. I'm, I'm very handy, right? I can change a light bulb. I can yes. paint this. I can do that. Uh, not just a light bulb, but I can like put a new light fixture sure. in, right? Yeah, I, can do yeah. the things. I don't do plumbing, but I mean, I do all these other things. And I think part of that is that transformation process. I have the vision to see what's possible. I'm very much yep. about potential. Yeah. and seeing kind of the best in others. I mean, that comes back to that branding or whatever. It's like, there are often times that I, I'm talking to someone and they don't realize sort of that like special, sort of their little nugget of, of brilliance. I'm like, you know, this, right? This is what, and they're like, what? You know, I think we, you know, we tend to discount things that come very easily to us and natural yeah. things. You know, every, everybody can do that. That's not very special. It's like, no, <laughs> it's not. It's, it's a special thing. So. I mean, that transformation is so powerful, right? I mean, it, in somebody's life, I, I've gone through several of them. So I'm a big proponent of that. But when I can be an active participant in one of those, right. something that I wrote helps inspire someone to make a positive change. It gives them that little encouraging nudge. I mean, the highest compliment you could give me or one of them is, uh, you know, your words helped me, you inspired right. me to do something. Right. And I've been fortunate to be on the receiving end of those several times. Often they'll come from somebody in a private message or an email that I, I didn't even know was listening, right? Because yeah. that's the thing about our stories and we people, ah, it's not very important, who cares? Never, but someone is always listening. Someone's always watching. You don't know how your words will impact somebody else. And I guarantee they will always, always land with at least one person and probably more, you know? So it's really important to share kind of our journeys and our perspectives and our things. Um, somebody out there wishes they were where you are right now, right? right? Yeah. So um, you can help them. And so that idea of, of inspiring transformation for me is, is central to my core. It's why I do what I do. Um, it's why I'm addicted to HGTV. It's why, you know, it's really all about sort of the possibilities and living in that world and, and very future focused on what could be. Um, so. That right. just makes me laugh because my wife would, would, if she could delete HD and Discovery and the Learning Channel, she would delete them off because that's all I want to watch. It's so funny. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, all right. So this is a perfect segue. So you just celebrated yeah. your 10 year anniversary of entrepreneurship last year. And so again, you know, when you took that leap of faith and you, you know, you're like, who knows what you're getting into, you know, that's mm-hmm. what entrepreneurship is. It's yeah. all about hope. And that's so like, you know, Damon and I, we love working with entrepreneurs. I've never met an entrepreneur that went into business planning to fail. They are all you know, half full, <laughs> super optimistic, you know, sometimes maybe a little, you know, we're all a little del- delusional at times. Yeah. But what I want to talk about is like your journey over the past 10 years. Okay. Mm-hmm. We're going to take a deep dive into you write for Forbes, five articles a month, mm-hmm. wow. even a month, a month, Whew. 12 months, a year. That's 60 articles a year. She's been doing it since 2018. So she, uh, that's just in Forbes. Yeah. She has a new newsletter called momentum. We're going to talk about that. She has another newsletter, illuminate me. So let's talk about like, as you started putting out your content 10 years ago, like talk like how, what was going on then when you first started and how did you evolve as a content creator, ghostwriter? Like what, what's been your evolution to get here? Um, well, I, when LinkedIn, remember, the, I'm old enough to remember that LinkedIn didn't always allow everyone to just publish. Yeah. Right? yeah. It was in the beginning, they had their um, influencers, right? Mm-hmm. These titans of industries and people. And so we'd go on, they'd just like read things about it. And, and um, you know, but then they opened it up. I want to say it was, tw- I don't know, it was it was a while back and they mm-hmm. opened it up. And, and when they did to code from the general public, I was like, okay. Well, why not? You know, just put it out there. And, you know, this is like nobody else is doing it, whatever you do it. And what happened was I found that when I started sharing my ideas and content and different things, um, I kind of found my tribe. You know, you, you mm-hmm. find other people that resonate with what you're saying and made some very good friends Um that I would meet in person much later, but you know, it's that, that idea of like, okay, there's a community online here and there, there's an audience, there's somebody that, and, and these are people not necessarily that became my uh, clients, but it's that, you know, become sort of that group of people that are like, okay. And I like the way you think, I, I like the way you move through the world. So, you know, when you have that sort of feedback and you find that, okay, so what I'm saying isn't, like boring <laughs> to everyone or whatever you're, you're, you know, at least I was sort of encouraged to do more and put out more. And, um, you know, in the beginning, it wasn't like I'm today, today, I, I publish content on LinkedIn and other platforms Monday through Friday. Right. And then with my newsletter, some other things too, but it, it's, I'm very consistent in doing that. But in the beginning, you kind of dip your toe in and go, okay, yeah. well, you know, you're, everyone was trying to find their way. There wasn't even this idea of like, oh, the creator economy or anything like that. Um, so I just kept going and doing it more frequently. And, I, you know, when you do something again and again, that practice getting in the reps, you're going to get better at it. And yes. it's not, you know, my, my level of writing got better. I would like to think, but it was also that I just, you know, was smarter about like, okay, not just throwing out any whimsical idea, but being very intentional about Mm -hmm. it and, and having sort of this framework and structure of like, okay, if, if somebody cares, I have to say, let it be meaningful. And I want it to be centered around some things that matter most to me, rather than just be a shotgun approach. Like, yeah, I'm going to t- not that I do this, but I'm going to talk about crypto or I'm going to talk about this popsicle. Yeah. Or I'm going to talk about this, you know, to make it really more focused and niche. And as I was doing that, my writing business also started it's wide and kind of, you know, narrowed down because when you're first starting out as an entrepreneur, I mean, let's be honest, you just like, I need to make money. I need yeah. to like, have some income. And yeah, I'm a writer. So with, and anybody, and there's a million different types of writers, right? It's mm-hmm. like, oh, Amy, can you write my web copy? Can you write this thing? You know, whatever. So I took on a lot of projects that, you know, today I, I would decline. Right. But I think part of that is putting yourself out there, trying it, doing it. And again, even if you're good at something, it doesn't mean that that's kind of what's going to be most meaningful to you or be the highest and best use of your talents. So as I went through this process and had different types of clients and different kinds of assignments, kind of narrowed the focus when, you know what, you know, given my history of storytelling, given my, you know, experience in branding people or places and products and companies, would it make most sense to focus on individuals? Because that's where I have this ability to kind of talk to somebody and pull out from them kind of the best and help them find the clarity and help them find sort of what are you really trying to say? And so we'd have conversations and it would be, they'd talk and talk and talk and talk. And I'd say, so do you mean this? And I'm like, oh, 
yes, yes. So a lot of what I figured out that comes naturally to me is helping other people find their clarity and kind of what matters most to them and pulling it out and then helping them stay organized in that framework to deliver it in a way that will be meaningful to their intended audiences. So um, you, you start broad, you go niche. And now I'm a social media ghostwriter, which means that I'm writing updates and, and, and articles for my leaders. Um, and they are typically CXOs and founders, that entrepreneurial mindset where they know it's like, you know what, it really, it's important for me to put my thought leadership out there to let people know how I think either because I'm trying to attract talent or partners or investors or whatever, mm -hmm. but I don't have the time or I don't have the wherewithal. It'll take me too long. I just need a partner, a thinking partner that can I can talk to weekly and help me get stuff out. And so that sort of became the evolution of what I do. So positioning them for success and then keeping them on track, pulling in sometimes, you know, entrepreneurs, I included lots of great ideas, right? Yeah. That's terrific. But we need to keep you right in and like, what's your goal? What do you want? And then I can help you kind of stay on track. Man. Okay. Yeah. There's this, there was this, yeah, that we need to uncover. Yeah. So let's, let's, all right. One of our favorite lines, Damon, niching down, right? Yes. We, we preach niche down, niche down, niche down. And I like to say niche down till it hurts, right? Niche down till it hurts. <laughs> but then to finish off that sentence, niche down till it hurts so good. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, when you started your business, Amy, you know, it hurts to say, no, Mr. or Mrs. Entrepreneur, that's not a good mm -hmm. fit because, you know, we're start. you know, you need that revenue, need those dollars, so on and so mm -hmm. forth. So God bless it that you've reached this point. You dropped the word clarity a couple of times. I'd like to run right into your trifecta. If yeah, you don't yeah. mind. So let's I, let, just take it away. What is your trifecta? And, and let me just say this super quick. OK, so okay. when you take OK, again, uh, you know, small company brand, uh, corp, big corporate branding guru, you become a CEO and a, and a nonprofit leap of faith and entrepreneurship. So, I mean, you've really covered different gamuts through your career. You've seen all different walks of life. And when you start out in 2011, who, who knows what, what's, what's ahead, right? We just don't know what's ahead. And you just became a relentless machine on content focus and practicing what you preach on niching down. And so what I, as you, as you share your trifecta, I'd like to talk a little bit about your journey on like how you felt you 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 could see yourself getting better and practicing what you're preaching and how you brought that to your clients. Yeah. Okay. So my I call it my power trifecta. Yeah. Yep. And it includes clarity, consistency, and discipline. So no matter what you're doing, whether it's like deciding what to write and content, your your career, your life, what you want to do. If you don't have clarity, it's going to have a really difficult time reaching your goal, right? You need to know, like, what do you want, right? It sounds like such a simple question, but I will tell you, if I asked anybody, what do you want? Be like, and it's not like, oh, what do you want for lunch? Like, what do you want? You really, you, people have to think about this because oftentimes mm -hmm. they'll say something that's very superficial and it's like, yeah, that's not what you want. What do you really want? And so when you finally, can you get to that point where you have clarity? And I tell that. I won't work with someone until they have that clarity because it's impossible. We'll go round and round in circles and you're never going to find it. It's like, what do you want? So clarity is super important because once you know what you want, then you can devise a plan to get there. Right. And if you know what you want, you'll also know, well, does this get me there? Or does this take me away from it? So mm -hmm. that's, it's really important to have both sides of that. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it became very clear, no pun intended, that it's like, I can't, I don't want to, and I want to just focus on, you know, social media ghostwriting. I want to have sort of this focus. I want to work with individuals. I don't want to do content for companies. I'm better served one-on-one -on -one with a leader, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's everything I do. Even my Forbes articles are very much focused on an individual. What can you do to grow as a leader? What can you do to better yourself? Because again, that's inspiring transformation, right? That's coming back to my why. So having that clarity and having the alignment of what you're all about will make your life infinitely easier, right? So, and saying no becomes easier too when you know this is what I want, right? And this does that, yep. does that help? No, nope. oh, so, you know, and there's a nice way to say Makes it no. easy. You know, I mean, I can say no now because I've gotten to a point where I've really kind of focused and consistently done this. In the beginning, it was much more difficult to say no to things because you're trying to find your way, but yeah. yeah. So that's clarity. Uh, consistency, 
man, oh man, you know, this is the most unsexy but effective thing there is. Nobody wants to hear it because everybody wants a quick fix. Everybody wants the shortcut. Everybody wants to, how do I trick the algorithm, Amy? How do I, you don't, I, I'm sorry. And if you're yep. not willing to put the work in, you probably won't get the results. You can ask any entrepreneur, they will tell you, right? There's like there's many, many, many years if there's work, it's hard work is the shortcut, right? Consistency pays dividends. And I will tell you, as a social media ghostwriter, I can't share because of confidentiality. I can't share when someone says, oh, Amy, what, share me, you know, what have you done for other people? I'm, I can't. Yeah. You don't, if you're on LinkedIn, you've seen all my work for my clients, right? Yes. But you don't know, and I won't do that. So it's really important for me to practice what I preach to my clients and, and have the consistency. So why does Amy write five articles a month for Forbes consistently since she started becoming a contributor? Why does she put out content Monday through Friday? Why does she do a week, two weekly newsletters now? Because consistency is the way. And if I didn't do it, who wants to hire a writer who talks this way and doesn't do it herself? I mean, it seems ridiculous, right? So you need, you need to have that consistency. And then Discipline, right? Discipline is, yes, it's it's showing up even when you don't feel like it, right? It, it, that's part of it. But the other part of discipline, at least in terms of content and writing, is staying in your lane. Now, mm -hmm. I, I, what I like to do with my clients is say, what are the three buckets, right, for your thought leadership? And, you know, they can be broad like leadership, right? That That's a pretty broad sort of bucket. But what, you know, I don't want is that you like, have all of these ideas where I want to talk about this or I want to talk about that. It's like, OK, does it align and fit in one of those buckets? No. Like, OK, then you probably shouldn't put it out there. Or I'm not going to write it for you. I'm advising you against that because you want to be intentional with your messaging. You want to be intentional with your content. If we're talking about thought leadership and if you're working with me as your social media ghostwriter, that's what it's about. I am going to say, OK, what do you want? What, you know, what, you know, what are your three buckets? And then, okay, let's talk about how, what you, how, you know, you move through the world and how that, what your experiences and stories, how do they fit into those three buckets? And that will become your content because you can decide those buckets, right? I mean, it's not like somebody puts a label on your head. So no, you can only talk about this, yep. but you need to have the discipline to stay in those things. If you want other people to come to associate you with those things, right? So the clarity, consistency, and discipline helps me personally because I it's like it's on my whiteboard I preach it right till I'm blue in the face but it's like whenever I've had issues it's because probably I'm veering too far from one of those three things of my power trifecta and I tell my clients the same thing that's incredible <laughs> it is because man I tell you what the consistency part of this is where people the people fit fall down and it's, it's just because you, it, I don't care if you're building a business uh, you mm -hmm. know, you're out building a manufacturing business, you're building a, a you know, a software company uh, or, or a personal brand. You got to show up and you got to do yeah. it. And Gail, Gail says that we'll go uh, Robertson. You know, she always talks about showing up and it's so, yeah. so key yeah. just to be there and do it. Um, yeah. And nobody got there. I mean, cause I, I'm just going to ask you one question. How many people do you know that really got, where they are that you go, wow, they really, they're, they're well-known or a leader in their field that didn't, wasn't consistent, wasn't showing up. How many people do you really know like that? You don't, you don't. <laughs> there and, you and go. If, they, if there's somebody who finds fame for something it, it, that isn't consistency based, it, it's pretty short lived you yeah. know, or like, yeah. okay, you're famous for being famous. You yeah, know, maybe, think, maybe the Kardashians, I don't know about, but that's maybe one person, that come, one group that comes, no, I'm just yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so Amy, this, all right, guys, let's just recap this again. If you're just, I, if you're cutting out, I know we're coming, man, we're going to be here all day. No, I'm just, yeah. we, be, we have so much uncovered. So I know it's top of the hour. If you're leaving, please connect with Amy. Please follow her. New, uh, she has two incredible newsletters, yeah, one yeah, here on newsletters. LinkedIn, one on her website. So again, if you guys are cutting out, have an awesome weekend, but please stick with us because we have so much more to cover. Amy, I just want to, so for kids at home taking notes, all the cool kids are here today, by the way. Yep. <laughs> Hi, cool kids. <laughs> number one, clarity. Number two, consistency. Number three, 
self-discipline. You're putting out an enormous amount of content. We have folks that are manufacturers. We have folks that are supporting manufacturers. We work with uh, manufacturing extension partnerships. Uh, Diane, if you're there, the t our TAC program, right? So there's all these different agencies out there. And they're like, you know, sometimes they get discouraged, Amy, where they're like, you know, geez, I'm doing this once a week or I'm putting this out or putting this out. You know, were there times, share a little bit, were there times where you're like, man, it is like I'm putting all this content out. Is this worth it? And I, and I know as an interviewer, I read somewhere, don't ask two questions. I'm going to break that rule. I'm going to ask you two questions. Was there a time where you're like, is this really working? And can you slide in? Was there a moment of like an aha or a tipping point of like, I'm really building a tribe. Like I'm, I'm you know, and I, you are so humble, so modest. I don't know if you want to consider uh, comfortable calling yourself an influencer. I feel you're an influencer. You've had an enormous positive influence on me from a distance for years. Was there a point where you're like, is this working? And did it slide into like, like when, when was that tipping point of like, I think I'm onto something. So I, I think there's a couple things here. So I, I will tell you, I go, even though I'm like comfortable and calling myself with authority, like I'm a writer, I'm human. I go through bouts of imposter syndrome still today. Like, who cares what I have to say? God, that, that, what I wrote was a kind of a piece of garbage, you know? It's like, yeah. no one's going to love that. And <laughs> the truth is, not everything will be a home run, right? When you're putting yeah. out, when you're talking huge numbers of things, you can't possibly have everything be, like, mm -hmm. stellar, right? So there's going to be a range. There's going to be some things that, you know, take off. And what happens is that, oh, Sometimes I'll write something super fast, nothing, eh, pfft, not very, whatever. It, it's something. And for whatever reason, that hits. Blows up. Right? Yeah. And yeah. Then I'll, I'll spend a ton of time on an article yeah. or something, and it just sort of falls flat. <laughs> so you never really know. And I think you need to be comfortable with the fact that it's like, again, coming back to just kind of consistently putting something out there. Right. I think for me, um, when I'm feeling sort of crappy or I'm feeling kind of like, pfft, you know, I'm all right. I mean, I'm one of a bajillion content creators, right? Is and it, it's not that I need this to kind of keep doing it because I'm I I you know disciplined enough to kind of keep showing up and doing what I do. But I will tell you, when I get a comment or more likely a private message that yep. somebody sent sends something to me and says, Amy, wow, I, I loved your your article or your, you know, update or whatever I put out there, some piece of content, it really, it, it struck me as something and it, it made, means the world to me. And, and they share a little bit of their own story and what they're going through. And, you know, you inspired me to, to make a change or to finally do something I had been hemming and hawing on. I mean, that is what keeps me going. That is what really fuels my, like, okay. You know, so I, you, you said something that you can I don't consider myself an influencer. And by the way, anyone who calls himself an expert or a guru or an influencer, that's something uh -huh. bestowed upon you. That's nothing not self-appointed. I mean, that's I mean, that's my yes. own little pet peeve. It's like, come on. So let but, me but but I mean, I would rather be someone who has a massive impact, right? Yes. That's yes. about positively impacting the world yes. and people through my words. That's you know what I want to do. Then uh, you know I'm an influencer, right? I mean because that term, I, I think there's good intent with that term, but it's so bantied about now that it becomes yes. it, it's lost some of its luster for me. Um, I appreciate if somebody says that I've influenced them or in some positive way. That's that's amazing, you know. But my aim is always to have and leave a positive impact, right? More about the legacy than it is about, you know, hey, aren't I great? You know, because, yeah. you know, if, if I can inspire someone else to take action, then then I've done my job. Yeah. And you definitely do that. And you just, I mean, like people just adore you. And again, I appreciate your humility. But when you look at your posts and again, guys, follow Amy. She posts five days a week. And Amy, when you follow your posts, I mean, you are a content machine. So I just, I, I, <laughs> like, I'd love to know how you pull it off. You know, I, obviously you never sleep, but I just want to, I want to share some, uh, some of the headlines. I feel like you have truly mastered your craft. Number one at the content. Number two at resonating and connecting. And again, I'm 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 speaking firsthand. I know we goof around a lot, but like I've been following you for years. You know, for and like you know, I just connected this uh, two months ago. I mean, like so for years, been like following your videos, your content, your articles, your Forbes articles. 
I see all the love that you get on your posts. You know, we mentioned some names, David Breyer and a bunch of other, you know, we, I won't use that word influencers, but other positive folks on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. You really have created a nice uh, following, a nice community. It's a credit to you of just that positive energy that you put out. But let me just share a couple of your headlines here. Five best people to add to your inner circle and three people to kick out. So, and I'm, I'm hoping I'm not good. Worried. I'm hoping I'm not one of those three yeah. That's awesome. ways to create, build and maintain career momentum. I want to talk about momentum in one second. Write a letter to your future self. Mm -hmm. Four questions that gauge your level of intellectual humility. Damon, you and I were just talking last week about our friend Wayne Dyer, the famous Wayne Dyer, and he used the term radical humility. I love that you have intellectual humility. Let's talk about this real quick, Amy. Okay that letter to your future self. I just, I love that article. The the comments were just off the charts. It just really resonated. Share for, with folks that missed that article. What is this letter to your future self? So, you know, it, it, the idea of writing a letter to your future self, there's a couple of things, you know, right around, you know, the holidays, everyone makes resolutions and New Year's things. And I've never been big on that. And, and science shows that, you know, even with the best intentions, people fall short by, you know, mid-February, right? And then you end up feeling yeah. crappy. It's like, who wants that? Why do you keep put, putting yourself through that cycle? Yeah. So the idea of um, writing your a letter to your future self, there's part visualization. It's, it's sort of the potential and possibilities. So you write a letter that's like, dear Amy, and, you know, this is me, to Amy a year from now, a year, five years. You can decide, right, mm -hmm. the beauty of that. Um, you know, and what you do is you write it as if you've already accomplished all those things that you want to accomplish, right? So it's already happened and you can date it, you know, like say it's a, a year from today. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and I'm reading this and you have that. And I think the exercise itself of going through and talking in the present tense or, or the you know past, you, you've done this. You know, mm -hmm. congratulations, you, you know, wrote a book, mm -hmm. you got a new job, you did a, whatever you did, and you can have multiple things, but did that. It's it's very empowering. It's uplifting. And then it's, a. am really big on a tangible, right? So I've done this and I literally have one kind of stuck you can't, off camera behind my computer here, just because I feel like when it's there, it's that visual reminder of like, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. And because I'm a very future focused person, always about what's possible, what's potential. For me, that really works. And I think for other folks, if you're feeling stuck, or you're feeling sort of like, you know, this is a way that can you can uh, put those sort of your goals and everything into a format and go through that exercise, writing things out to say, okay, this. And then, you know, what's really fun is, a year from writing that letter, you go back and revisit it. And oftentimes yeah. what happens is even if you didn't accomplish exactly what you thought it'd be, you've done so much, you know, you can yes. congratulate yourself. You can kind of, you know, oh, I said I was going to do this, but wow, I did this. Or, you know, and many people right now in the last several years have pivoted, right? Because of COVID, because of different things, they've had to be adaptable and do this. So it's highly likely that maybe something shifted, but it doesn't mean it's bad. It just means you did. And that way you can then celebrate that progress, whether you followed it to a T, which is rare, or, you know, something else happened instead that's also worth yeah. you know, kind of celebrating. So I think it's a nice exercise to do that and a great alternative to um, a New Year's resolution. Yeah. So, one of the things I got to back up just a little bit. I hear you talk and, and hear this passion behind what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you talk about clarity, consistency, discipline. Do you think your passion is one of the, just the keys, the passion behind that for leadership and bettering yourself and the people around you and the humanity and told, do you think that passion that really gets you going in the morning is kind of like that fuel behind it? I mean, maybe this is how I'm wired, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, but I will tell you, I'm a lot ex more excited and enthusiastic and happy because I am using my talents to their highest yeah. and best use, right? So, I mean, if you're out of alignment, your energy level is going to be lower. You're going to feel crappy, you know, because you're just, yeah. eh, I'm doing, I'm just going through the motions. I don't want to, I don't want to live my life going through the motions. I spent, you know, a few decades kind of doing other things. Yes. So, I mean, I, I feel like what you're getting, what you see is what you get with me always. So if I was upset, you would know. 
but I'm generally wired to be a, a happy person. And because I truly am happy and I really like what I'm doing and believe in what I'm doing, this isn't a show. This isn't a facade. I mean, yes. like I said, like I, I practice what I preach and, you know, maybe I'm not for everyone and that's okay too. But generally, um, you know, I, I do want to help, I, my, you know, inspiring transformation is my why I want to yeah. have a, a positive impact. I think about legacy. I'm old enough where it's like, I know the world isn't about me. You know, it's like, So, you know, I, I would say, yeah, that definitely plays a part. Um, and, you know, if people respond to that good energy, then that gives me even more, you yeah. know, so well, I think well, the people. If, Go ahead. Just one one second. Just the 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 clarity, consistency, and discipline. One of the things I see in that, I just don't think you have the energy unless you have the the fuel behind it, like you do. Because you can just like you said before, I can I can have clarity, and this is what I need to be doing consistently, mm -hmm. and do the discipline. But you just don't have that that extra piece that comes through in your work, mm -hmm. and and doesn't matter what kind of work you're doing. Well, but it's so I mean, cool to hear it. Yeah. I mean, if you're not feeling it, then maybe you're not clear on what you really want, yeah. you know? So, I mean, it, you might have to go back and revisit that too. And, you know, because oftentimes we think we know what we want yep. and it's not really what we want if we dig a little deeper. Um, so, you mm -hmm. know, not every, you can't be, it's not all, you know, look, I'm like a positive person, but it's not all rainbows and unicorns in my world. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I have, crap I got to deal with on a daily basis, just like yep. every other human being. Yep. But, you know, I, I choose, right. I choose to have a certain yeah. mindset. I choose to show up in the world because I feel like, you know, I want to add goodness. I want to add positivity. I want to be intentional with the energy that I put out there because God knows, especially on social media, there's plenty of divisiveness and negativity <laughs> and people tearing yeah. each other down. I don't want any part of that. I'm not going to do it. You know, yep. I, I'm awesome. doing the inverse of that. You know, I want to cheer people on and I'm genuinely excited with my clients and, and my friends do something. It's like it, it's that, you know, the difference between sort of the um, scarcity mindset versus abundance. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm not talking all woo woo, but just generally it's like there's enough for everyone. You yeah. know, yeah. you don't have to get defensive. You know, I'm just like, you know, you do you. I'll do me. Yep. You, yeah. you. This is yeah. so good, Amy. Yeah. So, guys, you got you're just getting a taste. And what I absolutely love, you know, you're, there's a lot of folks that can create content, Amy. And what I love, what you, you know, like you just said, Damon, backing up a little bit, you know, you are a coach. Like you are firm. You're yeah. like, you know, niche. You know, you know, you're you're encouraging your clients to stay in their lane, stay in their strike zone. We're big baseball fans. You know, hit those home runs, accept those strikeouts, as you're saying. You know, you put out that one post, you think it's you're going to crush it, and vice versa. Let's talk about momentum. OK, mm -hmm. so now you're writing all sorts of content. So, again, guys, she's on Forbes five times a month. I can't even imagine if I, I was just I was talking to a, a, a group about like putting out one article a month. And I'm yeah. like, I'm going to do that. So five articles on, on Forbes. So that's one audience. You have your Illuminate Me, your other newsletter, and you just started. You're like three weeks into momentum on right here on LinkedIn. Yeah. Fifteen thousand subscribers already on your newsletter here on LinkedIn. Talk about momentum, what this word means to you, why it's so important, and why are you putting this newsletter out? Well, uh, I'll start with the, the name. Okay, so momentum. Uh, momentum is my word of the year for 2022. And uh, I mentioned already that I'm not a big fan of New Year's resolutions. So what I do instead is I always choose a word to guide me for the year ahead, right? It becomes my North mm -hmm. Star. I, I'm a visual person, so I have it on my whiteboard. I have it, you know, I create a graphic around it. And um, the 2021's word was illuminate, right? And so and I created a newsletter called Illuminate Me because I want it to be action oriented. Illuminate, it has many different meanings. It has, you know, it's, it, but it's really about sharing and shining a light. And it very much aligned with who I am and what is feeling. Momentum, um, I may be one of the few folks who had actually a really great professional year last year and the year prior, I, I've actually been able to kind of right. do well. Um, and so I'm, I'm happy about that. Uh, but I never want to take it for granted. I don't want to get complacent. And uh, the idea of maintaining and building momentum um, seemed to be the perfect sort of word for me for this year. It's sort of like, okay, you've done this, but what else? I, I, I want to keep growing. I want to keep challenging yeah. myself. It'd be very easy 
to just sort of kind of go, hey, let's coast. We're good, right? But uh, that, that won't sit right with me. I, I have to keep doing it. I got it. It's scary sometimes to put yourself out there to try new things. And I will be trying some new things. One of it was like doing a LinkedIn newsletter, which I know to people go, well, she's a writer. Why is that scary? Well, because I'm still like, oh my God, what are people going to say? You know, you still have that sort of, th right. you know, bit of like seed of fear in you. So, you know, momentum is about building. And that again, comes back to this idea of that clarity, consistency and discipline, right? It's like, yeah. keep going, keep doing yeah. it. And, you know, um, there's always momentum when you have that mindset of like, I, I consider myself a lifelong learner right? Growth mindset where it's like, yeah, I, I'm super curious. Like that's one of the best things I think a uh, trait that I have is the curiosity because I'm genuinely curious about people, what makes them tick, what, you know, motivates them, what scares them. Like if I hadn't been a film major or write, you know, doing the writing, it'd probably be psychology just because uh, people fascinate me, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's that curiosity and then it's like, okay, well, why, how can we get better? Why do we do the things we do? And I love, you know, I, so I read a lot, not, you know, <laughs> I read a lot. I, I watch, you know, um, you know, documentaries and videos and movies and, and all sorts of things and, and listen to podcasts and all the stuff. There's a lot of information because there's always something that we can be learning. So momentum is about, you know, taking positive forward action, right? And it doesn't come in huge leaps, but it's going to come in those little steps taken again and yeah. again and again and again. That's how you maintain momentum. And so when I put together my LinkedIn newsletter, it was really around that idea. So I share, you know, an actionable an article with actionable things that people can do. And part of my momentum newsletter on LinkedIn also is a bonus. I'm like, oh, you know what? If they get this on a Friday, I can link to all my content from the, that earlier week. So you'll get you get links to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday's content as well to kind of yeah. keep it going. Yeah. yeah. And then and then your newsletter on Sunday is Illuminate Me. And it's a and it's a different message that you're putting out on Sundays. Right. Uh, yeah. So Sunday's newsletter is a Substack newsletter, still free. Um, but uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's similar content, but it, you'll get more aminess, right? It's where, and, and you're going to have a few personal stories and things, but I, I promise I weave it together in such a way that you're still going to get some actionable things to take away, right? It, it'll, it'll be some, it might have a random headline that'll be like, what is that about? Um, but I'll show stories. I'm real. I, you know, it's like what happened, whatever. And, and then there'll be something actionable. And then I, I will typically at the end of that, because it comes out on Sunday mornings, I'll link to my latest Forbes article that I share publicly on Monday. Um, you know, so it all, it all sort of feeds each other. <laughs> That's <laughs> like, cool. Yeah. Man, cool. This, so Amy, how, oh my God, I could listen to you all day, man. I mean, this is just so phenomenal. It's fun. Fine, you are, yeah. you, you know, and I appreciate your humility and, and, and I agree with that. The influencer word, please accept you are truly yeah. a gift. You are a blessing to literally, and I, and I know you know this, you know, literally thousands of people are out there enjoying your messages. One, one more title I wanted to share, uh, and I might butcher this a little bit, but seven questions to ask yourself to develop grit. And so like somehow, some way, like you really have perfected your craft, whether God given talent or whatever, of putting out these positive messages that people want to see. You've really, your, your, your headlines are captivating. You know, it's like, man, I have to read this and they're fun. They're snarky. They are powerful. They are helpful. And it's just Amy, right? It's all about just Amy. Amy, I know I could keep you here all day. I know you're super busy. Well, will you... <laughs> man, this was like, bet, wait, I, this was so good. Here's my last question for you. Okay. And I'll probably say this like five times, but anyway, I, I hopefully I won't, but anybody out there. So like, like, again, we work with manufacturers who are like, mm -hmm. finally, you know, in the past, like, ah, oh, we don't even need a website. We don't need, we go to trade shows, sales reps on the road. We don't, this whole content thing, everybody COVID, everybody's life changed. Right. Mm -hmm. So people's uh, people are, are intentionally doing content. They are podcasting. They are putting things out there. It's a little bit scary taking that leap of faith. Right. Okay, so for folks are, that are out there, they have a podcast on their radar. Maybe in that, let's talk about that future letter to themselves. Okay, that future letter says, "Hey, man, why don't you get out there and like blog just once a month? How about start a podcast or do a video?" But you know, so on and so forth. Go back to 2011, Amy. What advice do you have for that person out there who is they have a story to share, but maybe they're just a little fearful, a little scary, you know, hitting that submit button for that first time? What advice do you have for folks out there to get their story out there? 
Well, first of all, no, you're not alone. Everybody feels that same sense yeah. of fear, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's scary to put a piece of yourself out there. Make no mistake, when you were sharing sort of your insights or your, you know, experiences, yeah, that is a piece of you. And it should be personal because it's you, there's only one you and that your perspective what makes it magic, right? So I would say, you know, no, you're not alone. Um, push past your fear and just start anyway. Yeah. Start small. I mean, I swear the hardest is that first you know, the first time you post and you're thinking, oh my gosh, the world's going to end. And then you're, then you're waiting. Is anyone going to comment? Then we're going to like you get zero, anyone zero likes, not it? even a like. And nothing. then, you know, just keep doing it so people know. But I, I think the important thing is too, is, you know, know who your audience is, who are, who are you trying to reach and then go where they are. Right. So my clients are all B2B. So they're, they're, you know, people, their customers, their audiences, their, the talent they're trying to find, the partners are all on LinkedIn primarily. Mm -hmm. So that's where they choose to, you know, put stuff out there. So if you are looking for, you know, arguably, I mean, it's the professional network, right? That's what we talk about. Um, it's not to say you couldn't find the same people on Twitter or maybe Instagram or TikTok if that's your thing. But I would say, you know, it's a fairly safe bet to put something out there that's related to your industry your thought leadership in that industry, how you do what you do, a behind the scenes, whatever on LinkedIn. So start there. It's a fairly kind audience. Um, mm -hmm. There are exceptions and trolls, but I would say start there and know this too. And I said this earlier, somebody needs to hear your story. Yeah. Somebody you don't even know yet that you don't even realize needs to hear it and you will help them. So if not for you, do it for someone else because, you know, it, and that might set you over that hump and get you past it is that you're doing this. It is a service to others when you share your value with other people and you share your story. Moment of silence. <laughs> we're just, we, let's just, we're not going to say a word for a minute. Let's just take that in. <laughs> All right, guys. Friday, it's it's we're coming into time. Amy, yeah. oh my gosh, are you it's incredible? Are, you are such a blood. This is like the fastest hour, Damon. Like I could yeah. do an hour right now. So this was so phenomenal. Well, the thing I can feel, I can feel what I read. I can feel it coming from you now. And I mean, yeah. and this is this is the thing that I that I love about reading your stuff. And it's so great to get to talk to you here too, because you can feel your passion, you can feel that energy, and you can feel that. And I think that if people when they're when they read something or they think about something and they're thinking about trying to develop content, just, just use that, use your feelings. Right. And, and if it feels like that to you, just let it go. And you do such a good job of that. I just, I'm just enthralled by it when I read. Thank you. Well, and, and you said something that I would like to remind people of too. If it sounds like me, write the way you speak, right? Yes. You don't have to take on some error and academic <laughs> or whatever it's the whole point of putting content out there is to connect with others and communicate and you're going to do that if you just write the way that you speak i mean sure grammar yeah. all that yeah but you know use the voice that you have because that's unique to you and that's what connects you to people you know offline so use that same voice and that same tone in your writing awesome yeah. Amy, all right, everybody out there, how about a little standing yeah. ovation for our dear friend Amy, <laughs> just Amy in her in her luxurious office, right, Amy? <laughs> yes. Oh, right. I'm hanging out in my basement. So, Amy, let's wrap up on this. So, guys, please follow Amy. Check out her Forbes articles. They are off the charts. They are phenomenal. Follow her on any social, obviously here, LinkedIn, Twitter, wherever you want it, wherever you hang out, hang out with Amy. Follow, sign up for her newsletter. Boy, you mm -hmm. would be so grateful, so thankful. You want a, a momentum. If you're looking for momentum this year, and if nothing else, you know, for folks that are just getting on LinkedIn and like maybe your your audience is a little bit small, and and you're, and I always tell folks, you know what? Find someone like Amy who is super active because the folks that are hanging out on Amy's and yep. her tribe that are posting, those are the types of folks that you want. You know, high quality professional people, yep. engaging, mm -hmm. funny snarky, moving the needle. We're all in this together. So Amy, God bless you. Thank Aww. you. Thank you. I am so honored to spend this time with you today. We are so blessed to have you on the show. So uh, man, we got to have you back. This was so oh, cool. I would yeah. love that. Thank you guys. I'm it did go fast. Sorry if I was like, jabber, jabber, jabber. Oh my God. No, great. great. I like, I, I'm actually, I'm going to delete. I, Damon, I'm going to go back. If we edit this, I'm going to delete everything I talked about. It's just Amy. We're just, <laughs> nobody cares about that. <laughs> Drink. Drink. Your Amy. So all right, guys, let's close out on this. If you aren't inspired, if you aren't motivated, if you aren't striving for momentum from this conversation, 
man, we need to have a one-on-one -on -one with yeah. you and Amy because we need to get you into shape. So guys, go out there, be like, what an inspirational story here. Get out there, keep crushing it. People need to hear your story. Get just fired up. So guys, we have a great week coming next week. Damon, we're back on Monday with our Manufacturing Monday Motivation yep. Conversation. We'll be back here on LinkedIn Live. Guys, sign up for Amy's newsletter. She has a killer week ahead of you coming up. Guys, have an awesome, awesome weekend. God bless you. Damon, take it away, brother. Wow, I don't know how to follow this up, <laughs> but thanks so much. Thanks so much, everyone in the comments. They were rolling, Amy. If you haven't seen mm -hmm. the comments, they're just, they're just going. And uh, Kurt and I, so blessed to have you yes. on today. Thanks so much. We're going to be back again next week. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thanks, Thanks for having me, guys.